Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another detailed U.S. weather forecast for Sunday, June the 4th, 2023. In this update, we are going to be looking at more thunderstorm chances for much of the western half of the U.S. with more significant heat waves for the northern tier and for the Pacific Northwest. Also, if you're new to the channel and you really like these detailed weather updates, please consider subscribing, hitting the like like button, sharing this video with their family and friends on social media, and also leaving an awesome comment in the section below this video. So without further ado, let's get started and take a look right now at our current weather conditions happening right now across the United States because there's always something to talk about. That's the interesting thing about the current weather conditions. So we're going to first take a look here at Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas where we do have pop-up showers and thunderstorms. Some of these have been notorious of producing a tornado, some large hail, and some gusty winds, especially across Amarillo, Texas on the I-40 corridor going through the northern panhandle there, including for western panhandle of Oklahoma, where you have had some showers and thunderstorms there. Also in Denver, currently in the mid-50s, we got showers and thunderstorms moving in from the east across I-70 on the I-25 corridor, even in, in across Fort Collins. If you're in Cheyenne, there on I-80, we got some pop-up showers and thunderstorms around this big fat Omega Ridge. You can see it here twirling around uh, all across Bismarck, uh, Grand Forks, uh, Winnipeg there, seeing temperatures already in the lower 90s. Yeah, that's pretty warm for Canada standards, and it's all, again, because of this big, large-scale ridge pattern that is in place. And as long as we have that ridge, it's going to stay pretty hot for a few more days. And then across um, Florida, this is where we are seeing some of our showers and some thunderstorms with temperatures in the mid to upper 80s already leading to daytime heating and those thunderstorms that are really using up all that energy and moisture to really uh, create some powerful updrafts and some downdrafts leading to, again, some severe weather down there too. Last but not least, let's take a look back at, towards the west here. This is where we are going to have to monitor especially for this afternoon, especially for Monday and Tuesday, where we could get some severe weather here. We could see some strong thunderstorms, especially tomorrow morning all the way through perhaps Tuesday afternoon, part of a pretty intense upper-level disturbance that is going to set up shop across Central California and Northern California. And yes, there are some storms popping up We'll talk more a lot about that in this video in just a little bit. So here's a detailed look at the latest European global computer model. This is for Sunday afternoon, June the 4th, 2023. And it really paints a great picture of what it's going to look like this afternoon with a lot of showers, some thunderstorms across the high plains, the Rockies, the northern Rockies, the northern plains, including for what we talked about down here across Florida. We have some of those showers and thunderstorms that do continue to blossom and we're going to see a repeat of that all the way through tomorrow so let's fast forward this all the way into tomorrow afternoon again you can see for your monday showers and thunderstorms across texas also for the four corners not to mention here in california like i said it may not seem like much but we are expecting to see quite a bit of showers and thunderstorms some of these will be strong and some of them could produce some strong wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour frequent cloud of ground lightning and some accumulating small hail maybe even some larger hail with some of the stronger storms. We'll get into a lot more detail towards the second half of this video. And then going all the way in to say Tuesday, again, more of the same thing, showers and thunderstorms really popping up in the afternoon, thanks to this very strong omega block that just does not want to move away. It helps to stagnate the air, warm it up a little bit more, and at times we get a lot of these thunderstorms that pop up in the afternoon. This continues all the way into Wednesday, all the way into Thursday, June the 8th. More showers, more thunderstorm chances do continue, and yeah... Look at this for Friday, June the 9th. Uh, again, more showers, more thunderstorms across Salt Lake City, Utah, in Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Oregon, Washington. Yeah, good to see quite a bit of showers and thunderstorms here too for your Friday. And then all the way into Saturday, we have 
Again, the repeating uh, effect of showers and thunderstorms across California and Nevada. Again, some of these could be strong, including for the chances of more showers and thunderstorms there for the northern tier of the United States. So looking at your temperature anomaly here, actually, let's go to this first. Okay, here's a look at your daytime temperature forecast for this afternoon. Temperatures again in the upper 80s, low 90s. That's what we talked about. Some 90s and triple digits here in the desert southwest, including for portions of California. The warm weather continues, not going anywhere anytime soon because of this big ridge of high pressure. Going to continue to dominate much of the U.S., bringing temperatures well above average especially for Canada where you have numerous wildfires burning there this is going to continue all the way into Tuesday with very warm temperatures 80s and 90s across the Midwest and the deep south there including some cooler temperatures which is nice to see for the West I mean it, we're ready for the heat but at least it's not 115 plus degrees right like it could be in September uh, like it was last year and so going all the way into uh wednesday it's more of the same thing warm temperatures likely to persist thanks to that big omega block large-scale ridging there including for the central southern canada area Mon uh if you're in say manitoba saskatchewan alberta canada temperatures in the upper 70s low 80s and this could continue all the way into Thursday and even into Friday, as you can see here with these warming temperatures, even some 90s. Wow, that's really warm for British Columbia, for Alberta, Canada. Wow, that is really anomalous for this time of the year. Even some mid 90s at far north. Wow, who could think of it being that hot um, in northern British Columbia and Alberta, Canada? All right, so now temperature anomalies. Of course, this is going to be above normal. Definitely a stoke of warm temperatures, uh, far above average. And this continues through the next three to five days. This is your one-day average temperature anomaly forecast. So it's basically a departure from your seasonal averages for the time of the year, right? So areas in blue here indicate below average. Areas in red here indicate above average temperature anomalies uh, in a one-day average given time frame, okay? And that continues all the way through days five and six. And when we go forward a little bit more in time here on the European model, we will see uh, it is going to remain quite warm across the Pacific Northwest. I mean, look at this. I mean, the coolest area on this map is actually California and Nevada, including for uh, portions of Arizona, uh, while much of the country here in the north and including for Canada will remain above average for quite a while. There's not much cold weather on the way coming, unfortunately. And this is part of that El Nino pattern that we have been discussing in previous updates. Speaking of that, I will have an update on El Nino for tomorrow. But it's also a good idea that I also wanted to show you guys this image. This is courtesy. The credits go to PG and E for providing these awesome images that update quite frequently. And what this is showing us is the cloud buildups that we're going to be seeing in the afternoon. In fact, if we take a look at the last hour, we can see just how few clouds there are. And then all of a sudden you can see by the end of this image, how we get these billowing cumulus clouds. That's due to daytime heating. And this is the Sierra that you're looking at here. And so this is going to be important because we're going to be seeing more of this. You're going to see blue skies in the morning, followed by stormy skies in the afternoon. Now, there's no rain coming out of these yet. I'm sure there's some lightning strikes and stuff like that. And we're going to see more of this tomorrow and also for maybe uh, for sure on Tuesday and even on Wednesday too. So if you're going to the Sierra, keep that in mind. So now we're going to take a look here at the um, at basically uh, the NAM three kilometer model, and this illustrates with what we're going to be looking at today for the afternoon. While there is not a lot of coverage here on the NAM three kilometer model, uh, you just don't underestimate things. Okay, we're already seeing pop-up clouds and it's about noon here uh, locally solar noon is at about a, about 103 today and so uh, there's a lot more land heating to come and there's gonna be more storms that really fire up this afternoon so 
no storms tomorrow morning but then by tomorrow afternoon again there is going to be more of these showers and thunderstorms in california nevada gonna see more storms now while the coverage is not extensive there we're gonna see quite a bit more than what the nam actually shows here look at this a big cluster of elevated convection overnight monday into tuesday some of these storms could produce some 50 mile an hour wind gusts that could bring down trees and power lines. This could also cause some property damage, including the risk for some large hailstones with the most intense high based thunderstorms. And of course, we're going to see um, quite a bit of frequent cloud to ground lightning strikes. And some of these lightning strikes um, could strike quite far outside of thunderstorms. So keep that in mind. If it's clear above your heads, you might, you're, you're close enough to and still get struck by lightning the hints or the hint of the name here is when thunder roars go indoors that's kind of the same so if you hear thunder you're close enough to get struck by lightning and that's going to be the theme in california because we got this upper level low pressure disturbance that is going to be in place and that's going to wrap around a lot of moisture instability we're going to get dynamic lift and cooling with this and that's going to help to really augment the thunderstorm convection even the h triple r if we actually quickly look at that this is showing something quite similar this is the 12z run and again take note again more coverage i believe is going to be the theme here on the h triple r than what the nam was showing uh, and so uh, again small hail uh, accumulating hail at times some lightning strikes today in the mountains and then tomorrow we get more of these storms for the northern tier of the, the state and then more storms pop up really into the overnight hours of Monday into Tuesday. And again, some of these could contain some hail, gusty winds, blowing down trees and power lines. And some of the more organized storms could perhaps produce some more heavier downpours and 60 plus mile an hour wind gusts. So yeah, and a lot of lightning strikes to go along with that. So, yeah, going to be a little interesting Monday and Tuesday around here. Might go live if necessary, especially Monday night. So stay tuned for that on my YouTube channel. Do I rarely go live with my local weather unless it's interesting? So what is also interesting is the amount of lightning strikes. Yeah, look at all the blue shading on your screen here. It indicates quite a bit of lightning in the mountains today of Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Just keep that in mind. If you're doing any hiking outdoors, if you're driving up there, just keep that in mind. You might want to probably push that off into early tomorrow morning because once we get into tomorrow afternoon, the storms build up again. So hiking should be second fold here uh, for tomorrow and into Tuesday. By Monday afternoon, again, more of these storms pop up. Lots of lightning strikes here, I expected. And then you can see here also into Monday night, into Tuesday, we have a lot of lightning strikes. Could be a very interesting Monday around my neighborhood as we track these storms. Well, that's going to sum it up for today's detailed weather forecast for the entire United States. If you found this video very helpful, Please make sure you leave a like, hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel and you like these updates and you want to return for more. Subscribe, share, and like. It really means a lot, folks. I might be going live tomorrow night if the thunderstorms do get near my area or if there's a high enough confidence. So stay tuned for that. We're going to go mobile version if necessary. Yeah, I'm going to use my iPad or my iPhone to stream the skies for possible lightning strikes that might be quite exciting. So I'm looking forward to that only if it happens though. But otherwise, thank you all for watching. I'll be back with you more tomorrow with more weather updates.